what is up guys welcome back to life on the wrist we're going to be continuing our series about legendary figures within the watch uh with, within watchmaking uh we've created uh, i think two other episodes so be sure to check those out i think we're going to end up making a playlist about these because this is a very fun topic to talk about it's really fun for me to research these individuals and then obviously make these videos um, it also allows you to learn a little bit about the history behind watchmaking. So today, our legendary watch figure is Louis Monet. Uh, Louis Monet is obviously a huge icon within uh, the, the watch world. Um, the biggest kind of mark that he made on the watch world is he's known for the invention of the chronograph. Um, obviously, if you don't know this, um, speaking to watchmakers, they... Well, a lot of watchmakers believe that the chronograph is the hardest movement to create, maintain, all that kind of stuff, learn how to, to produce. So it's a very big step within the watch world. Uh, so Louis Monet, thank you very much for your contribution to, to Phorology. Um, so just if you don't know the, the way that these, weird, these videos work, we basically go into the history about the individual, t tell you a little bit about their past, talk about the, the, way, the things that they contributed to watchmaking. And then from there, um, just tell you tell you the the end of their life kind of sad but uh so um we can just dive right into this one uh so louis monet was actually born in 1768 in borges uh france i believe i pronounced that wrong um so please correct me um his family was um, farmers but apparently they were very upstanding individuals um they had a lot of you know just just a lot of pride and, and very um down to earth individuals but they were farmers um he ended up going to school and was known to, uh, known to be a very good student um, of the classical subjects, so things like um, art and um, uh, writing and those types of things. Um, and he actually came first in a lot of academic competitions that he took part in. So Louis Monet was definitely not a, a stupid person. He definitely knew a lot um, and was a very um, intellectual guy. Um, when he was a student, he was kind of introduced to watchmaking and that's kind of where he, he first started kind of learning about it. Um, at the age of 20, he ended up leaving France and went to Rome, Italy, where he lived for five years and he ended up studying architecture, sculpturing, and painting. So he was one, he was a man of the arts for sure. Um, and throughout those five years, he kind of became an expert in those um, topics and ended up moving to Florence, where he learned how to do uh, stone engraving, which is obviously a very hard, um, it's a, it's a difficult art form to, to master, but that's what he ended up learning about and ended up um, doing. So um, as you can see, he, he traveled within Europe, but um, France and Italy seem to be uh, places to be when it comes to um, art and, and, and those types of um, uh, vocations. So he was definitely in the, the correct areas. Um, then in 1795, he actually returned to, palace, uh, to Paris where he became uh, the professor of the Académie des Beaux Arts in uh, the, the Louvre. Um, so, um, kind of took his uh, vocation of learning how to do all these different types of art forms and became a professor. And so while teaching, being that he had probably a little bit of extra time, um, he ended up pursuing horology and kind of uh, started uh, learning about um, how, uh, how to put watches together and those types of things. I forgot to mention that when he was a student, um, when he was living back home, with his uh, family, he actually had a teacher who was teaching him about horology, and that's kind of how he got into um, into um, horology. And then when he decided to pursue horology as a passion when he was teaching, he ended up going back to that teacher and learning um, from that individual. Um, he then spent time in the Vallée des Joux, where he met Abraham Louis Breguet, and worked very closely with Breguet until Breguet ended up dying. Uh, Breguet was one of the uh, legendary watch, uh, legendary uh, figures within the watchmaking um, industry that we discussed in one of our previous videos. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. It's probably in the side of the of this uh, screen that you're looking at, or below if you're on a phone, um, because it's it's going to be a common video. Um, so uh, worked very closely with with Breguet, and um, I mean two two extremely into extremely smart individuals and people who had a huge impact within the watch world so pretty cool that they ended up meeting up with each other and, and learning from each other and, and studying horology um but you know some things about louis monet and, and watchmaking he was actually kind of a, like an unusual watchmaker uh, he had some unusual habits for example um a lot of the times in his pocket watches he had a whole gear train 
that was on one pinion, which is not typical. Typically, you have multiple multiple gears under different pinions, um, so that was something unusual in his in his pocket watches. He also created a new mainspring, where he um, he had a different type of mainspring that he used to use. He also redesigned uh, the balance cock, which is basically on the balance wheel, by removing the studs so it would oscillate differently. Um, but these are all for accuracy, and he ended up actually becoming the president of the chronometer chronometry society in Paris um, so all of these things were all of the things that he kind of focused on were were catered towards making more accurate uh, watches so pretty cool um, obviously if you rub shoulders with people like Abraham Louis Breguet and you're you know focusing on um, focusing on chronometry and becoming the the president of the chronometry society in Paris you probably will end up racking up a very good client list and that's exactly what Dubuis Monet ended up doing um, he made clocks for extremely famous people. Um, one example is for Napoleon Bonaparte, which if you don't know, Napoleon Bonaparte was a huge part of the French Revolution, kind of led the, led the whole movement. And the clock that he ended up making for Napoleon was an eight day, uh, eight day power reserve clock that included a date, which as I've mentioned in another previous video about um, legendary figures within the watch within watchmaking um, having a date function on any type of timing mechanism was something that wasn't um, it was extremely rare so this was an extremely a very important watch for um, for Napoleon but also for horology in general he also made a, uh, a clock for the Tsar Alexander the first so another very big um, individual on his client list also King George the fourth from England he made a clock for for King George um, so huge amount of uh, of people that that had his had his uh, timepieces within their um, within their grasp. Uh, another individual um, that you could talk about is Thomas Jefferson, someone a little bit closer to those of you who are from the U.S. Um, they, he also made a watch from uh, a clock for James Monroe. Um, so very distinguished people were going to Louis Monet and asking him to create pieces for them, which, I mean, if you have someone so so smart and someone who's rubbing shoulders with the correct people like Brigue, um, what do you expect, right? So very cool client list. I, I would love to have these types of individuals on my client list uh, if I was a watchmaker, so pretty cool. Um, kind of going back to what he is most famous for, obviously the first chronograph that was ever created, that was in 1815. It was commissioned in 1815 and subsequently finished. It actually looks like a, it looks like a, um, a, a pocket watch, but it just has a, a timing function. It was actually called a, comp, uh, excuse my French here again. It's, he called it a Comptur de Tircé. I probably pronounced that incorrectly. Please correct me if I did. Um, so, uh, he didn't call it a, a, a chronograph, but it, it was um, definitely that function. So in 1815, we had our first chronograph that, that was produced, which was pretty cool. Um, so, um, again, you know, studied with, studied horology, met up with some of the most famous watchmakers ever, uh, had an amazing client list with people like Napoleon and Alexander I, King George, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe, created the first chronograph. What more can a watchmaker do? Um, it's pretty simple. He actually ended up publishing an, ex an, an encyclopedia for watchmaking in 1848. This was actually the first encyclopedia that kind of uh, had all of the information about basic uh, watchmaking in it. Um, it was called uh, Traite de Horologie. Um, so someone who uh, Louis Monet kind of became a, a scholar in a way. And uh, I'm sure that watchmakers use that now. Um, even today, they probably look back at that and um, pay their respects to it. So, um, I mean, what, what, what more can you say about a person who, who had such an impact on watchmaking? First chronometer, amazing client list, rubbed shoulders with some of the greatest horologists um, like, uh, like Breguet. Um, so uh, what, a, what a wonderful life he led. He ended, up, um, he ended up passing in Paris on the 21st of May, 18. 53 at age 85 um, to put that in perspective people didn't live to the, to the age of 85 so perhaps the watchmaking helped him live a healthy lifestyle um, but as always his legacy lives on not just because of the chronograph um, but also and not just because of the encyclopedia that he ended up writing but also because there is a company called Louis Monet that 
um, produces watches till this to this day they actually came out with a really cool watch I made a video about it um, previously <clears throat> uh, they create, came out with a watch called um, Ode to the 70s it's a really funky looking watch it was released at Basel uh, last year so if you haven't seen that video check it out if you haven't seen that watch check it out it's a very cool watch um, so his legacy kind of lives on with with that uh, watch company um, and I'm so glad that that's, that that actually happens that he, his legacy kind of didn't just kind of die die off. So um, really glad to see that. So that is Louis Monet. I hope you enjoyed the information that I was able to, to give you guys. Um, I'll put some links in the description to some some other sources that you can use to kind of research him. But a really cool guy and, and someone who had a huge impact on watchmaking for sure. Um, if you haven't seen our other videos about legendary figures in within watchmaking, be sure to check those out. Um, in our channel and while you're there be sure to subscribe to our channel as well as hit that like button on this video it really does help us out um, let's see if we can get to 20 likes like we always try to get to um, and when you do that um, comment in the comment section when, once you've done that also if you have some watchmakers that you want us to kind of uh, do this type of uh, video on be sure to put those in the comment section below we want to make sure that we're doing videos for you so um, uh, if you have have a watchmaker that you want to learn more about or perhaps just hear my thoughts on, be sure to put that in the comment section. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.